watching this free video tutorial from mographplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 for Maya fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya course, which is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Welcome folks, it's Khezri here from mographplus.com and in this lesson we'll learn how to create realistic fabric shaders in Arnold for Maya using the newly introduced sheen component in the standard surface shader. You can download the project files for this lesson down below in the description. First of all, let's change the perspective view to hypershade and run the IPR from the Arnold render view. I'm going to press tab in the hypershade and add a new Arnold standard surface shader. In the Arnold render view, make sure shape picking is enabled from the window menu. Select the fabric geometry and assign the standard surface shader to it. Now select the standard surface shader in the hypershade. To create realistic fabric shaders, we only need base and sheen components. So let's zero out the specular weight and open up the sheen layer. If you take a look at this reference photo, you can start to see what makes fabrics look like fabrics. Look how the faces or polygons that are parallel to our viewing direction are darker and the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction become fuzzier and brighter. If you can simulate this, you can get realistic fabric shaders and this is what sheen component is supposed to do. First, let's try to create a purple velvet shader. For the base color, double click on this color swatch and use this dark purple. You notice in the IPR it doesn't look like fabric at all because we still don't have that previously described attribute of fabrics. If I increase the sheen weight to something like 0.3, we immediately get that fuzziness at glancing angles. You notice how the parallel faces to our viewing direction are showing the defined darker base color and the perpendicular faces are showing the defined white sheen color. In addition to that white color, sheen component also adds that feeling of fuzziness by simulating microfibers. We also have this sheen roughness which modulates how much the microfibers diverge from the surface normal direction. So basically using the roughness value you can control where that fuzziness begins. By increasing it, it begins at lower angles from the parallel faces and by decreasing it the fuzziness starts at higher angles from the parallel faces. If I set the roughness to 0.1, you see how the sheen effect is limited to very extreme glancing angles. And if set to something like 0.6, now that sheen effect is more widespread and starts earlier. For something like velvet, let's set the sheen weight to 1 and sheen roughness to 0.1. And for the sheen color, let's use a brighter, less saturated color compared to our base color. And now as you can see, we get this nice velvet shader. We can rename the standard surface shader to velvet underscore zero one or something like this. If we bring up the reference picture again and zoom in a tad, you notice we have this fabric pattern throughout. We can actually add this pattern as well. So let me just duplicate this shader from the edit menu in the hyper shade and just choose duplicate shading network and assign the new shader. We can rename it to something like velvet pattern. And uh, let's load this fabric pattern image through a file node. And uh, we want to use this as the bump map. Now connect this fabric pattern image to the bump mapping input of the standard surface shader. Now select the newly created bump 2D node and set the bump height to around 0.75 or bump depth, sorry. 
And obviously, if you want the pattern to be more obvious, you can obviously increase the bump depth, but I think 0.75 uh, would be a good value. And I'm going to set the tiling of the fabric pattern image to 0.2 and 0.2. Now let's see what we're going to get. And now we have this beautiful fabric pattern as well. Let's create a crushed velvet, something like this reference photo right here. For this, let's duplicate the original velvet shader. We need two base velvet shaders. One should be fairly brighter than the other one. Then we mix the two to get the final crushed velvet look. So let's duplicate the standard surface shader again and use brighter base and sheen colors compared to our base shader. Now add an Arnold layer shader and assign it to the fabric geometry. Connect the darker velvet shader to input one. Enable the second layer and connect the second shader to input two. Load this map called BW8. And we're gonna be using this map to mix between the bright and the dark velvet shaders. Now connect its out color R to mix two inputs. Now set the tiling for BW8 map to 0.2 and 0.2. And let's see what we're gonna get. And now we are getting this nice and realistic crushed velvet shader. Let's just rename this layer shader to crushed velvet as well. Next, let's create a simple upholstery cotton fabric shader. So let's create a new Arnold standard surface shader and assign it to the fabric geometry. Zero out the specular weight and load the fabric pattern image again and set its styling to 0.2 and connect it to the base color input of the standard surface shader. Uh, we can draw a region to get faster feedbacks if we want to. Now we want to use the same image for the sheen color as well, but we want it to be brighter compared to the base color texture. So connect it to an Arnold color correct map. Now connect the color correct map to the sheen color input of the standard surface shader. I'm gonna set the sheen weight to 0.6 and increase the gamma of the color correct node to three. So we get a brighter version of our original texture as our sheen color texture. And I'm gonna set the sheen roughness to something like 0.2. Now for the bump map, we can connect the original fabric pattern image to the bump mapping input of the standard surface shader. And set the bump depth of the bump 2D node to something like two. We want the bump mapping to be a bit more obvious, obviously for this particular fabric look. Now let's see what we're gonna get. And here is our beautiful cotton shader. While we are here, let's create a colored version of this. Simply duplicate the uh, shader network again and assign it to the fabric geometry. I'm gonna add a layer RGBA node and use the fabric pattern image as input one and use this light reddish brown color as the second color for obviously our layer two. 
and set the second layer operation to negation and connect the layer RGBA to the base color input. And this way, instead of that black and white fabric uh, texture, we get this uh, colored version. And we can simply use the same layer RGB node as the input for the color correct node that is connected to the sheen color input. Now, for this to look better, let's increase the sheen weight to something like 0.8. So it really depends on what you're looking for exactly. If you want more of that fuzzy feeling, just increase the sheen weight. Now let's see what we get. And there you have it. Now, next let's go for a satin look. And for this one, we won't be utilizing the sheen component as for satin, if we take a look at this reference photo you notice satin is different and the uh, highlights are kind of playing with you. There is no well-defined pattern that you can describe, but I have a pretty good formula to create highly realistic satin or silk shaders and it involve curves. Let's create a new standard surface shader and zero out the specular weight and assign it to the fabric geometry. For silk, first we need a facing ratio node. So let's press tab and load it. Facing ratio outputs zero or black for the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction and one or white for the parallel faces to our viewing direction. But we want to be able to remap these values and for this we can use a remap value node. So let's uh, add one and connect the facing ratio node to the input port of the remap node and connect it to the surface shader input of the shading group to see what's going on as we are running the IPR. Now using this curve we can remap the incoming values from the facing ratio to whatever we want. There is a, a particular curve that results in a very very close look to satin or silk so uh, let's just open this one up we are trying to put the highest and brightest values to a bit to be a bit off of the exact parallel angles to our viewing direction and making the very frontal angles to be kind of just a, a tad uh, brighter compared to that very bright highlights that we just put in. I'm just gonna work a bit more with this curve to make exactly uh, to look what I want and I'll be back in a minute. Now a curve like this should give us a silk-like look. We just uh, we can make it a bit better, but you can do it on your own. And um, this should give us a really nice satin shader if we connect this curve to our kind of base color input of the standard surface shader. Now the next thing would be to incorporate the specific colors that we are looking for. To do that, we can use a layer RGBA shader again. So let's load one and connect the remap node to the mix2 input of the layer RGBA node. Now for the input1 color let's use a dark purple and for the input2 color we can use a brighter shade of the same color. And now connect the layer RGBA node to the base color input of the standard surface shader and connect the standard surface shader to the surface shader input of the shading group again. And here you have a very realistic satin shader. Now to get a different satin color, you can simply change the input one and two colors of the layer RGBA shader uh, or note. So let's use this uh, dark and bright green colors and see what we're going to get this time.
and here is our green satin shader. For now, let's stop the IPR and um, let's go for a tall shader that involves displacement mapping. So I'm gonna select the fabric geometry and increase its subdivision iteration to four so we can have a detailed displacement mapping and create a new standard surface shader and assign it to the fabric geometry. As always, zero out the specular weight and open up the base and the sheen components. I'm gonna use this darker shade of blue as the base color and this brighter shade of the same color as the sheen color. Let's set the sheen weight to around one. Now for the displacement map, let's load this towel image and um, set its tiling to 0.6 and 0.6. Now connect the out color R to the displacement input of a displacement shader. Now connect the displacement shader itself to the displacement shader input of the shading group. And select the standard surface shader and we can probably set its base weight to one so we would get a brighter uh, shader. Now let's see what we get. And here is the towel shader. So that's about creating realistic fabric shaders in Arnold for Maya. Make sure to subscribe and follow MoGraph Plus. See you next time. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 for Maya fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya course, which is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly.